It's Christmas season and... Uh, hold on. I'm getting a call from channel manager. Hello? Yeah, Christmas is over. You're supposed to be doing a New Year's video. I... I, I missed... I, I missed... Uh, cut. Cut. It's the New Year, so it's time to look back at 2023 and see which five anime were the best. I watch over 100 anime a year, so last year I took it upon myself to run through the best of 2022, and this year we're running it back again. For those who don't know, to be considered an OTR's top five of 2023, you have to, well, come out in 2023. So that means no season twos, no moves from pre-existing franchises, and no second cores that got delayed. Yeah, guys, that already takes out a lot of popular shows, but I'm gonna still give them their spotlight anyway. This year, the season twos absolutely dominated. Villain Saga season two came back to perfect Naruto's talk no jutsu, showing us that, hands up, motherfucker. I have no enemies. Nagatoro Season 2 came back, and no one watched it. Demon Slayer Season 3 tried to redo the hype of Season 2 and absolutely failed because they took out Best Boy Inosuke. And the show is now dead to me. Don Machi Season 4! Damn, how far have we come? I remember when Season 1 was out and no one was watching it. No, I'm not caught up. Gundam Witch for Mercury, my number three from last year, finally wrapped up its story, and although the ending was a little rush, it's still one of my favorite Gundam, even though Bandai has tried their best to censor the lesbian couple. It's up to interpretation that they could be friends. Oh, come no, on, no, you. They no, gay as hell. No, no. You know you wrong Look, for this. And so what does no, 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 don't throw stuff. Don't throw stuff. Dangit Magus Bride came back with peak fantasy storytelling, and Konosuba finally decided to make some profit off their most marketable character. Peak Isekai Tensei also returned with its second season about our hero suffering from ED, and we ate that shit up. We? Now we going to what war. do you mean we? Nintendo? No. Bleach, Spikes Family, Link Click, and Jujutsu Kaisen all said, hold my beer, as they elevated what was already a great show to new heights. And Google Stray Dogs came back with two seasons this year, and only one person watched it. Dr. Rock Solid, these episodes should have been in season one, Devil Fumbled the Bag, How to Make a Movie While Still Being a Pathetic Piece of Shit, and FLCL, I, I don't even have a joke for this one, why do they keep bringing this back? All made their returns this year, but the series I want to give the most spotlight to in this section is... It seems that every year a staple show in the community comes to an end, and it's once again the end of an era. Last year it was Mob Psycho, and this year was Attack on Titan. And even though the ending was received differently across the board, we have a whole video on it, and some liked it more than others. Y'all need to leave FD alone. I think we can all officially wave goodbye to the biggest outbreak smash hit show in anime history. See you later, Attack on Titan. That is totally Aaron's kid, you can't convince me otherwise. The sequels are out of the way, and now it's time to get to some new anime. <laughs> I'll never rhyme again, I'm sorry. When it comes to writing a story, landing an interesting concept is like hitting the lottery, and we had a bunch of interesting concepts emerge this year. Like the otaku oppression anime Magical Destroyers, which looked incredibly promising with its OP, ED, and stunning visuals, studio trigger-like influence, it had it all, but it ultimately fell flat on its face because the middle part of the show was boring as hell. But if we're talking about falling flat on its face, ZOM 100 could have been the show to take the anime community by storm with its new take on the zombie genre, if the production studio hadn't taken the first episode so seriously and overworked its animation team, causing for multiple delays, leading to the biggest case of irony in anime history. Okay, okay, okay. The official statement is scheduling issues. As of recording of the video, we don't actually know what caused the delay, but let's be honest here. We've been here before. But what about Hell's Paradise? A new battle shown with the concept to get anyone invested. And even though people had problems with the animation, which isn't the most important part, you can see more in this video, I think Jigoku Raku fell flat because the story isn't meant to be viewed in seasons, but rather in one go. Trust me, as someone who finished the manga, if the entire series gets adapted, we're in for a treat. But enough of concepts that fell flat on their face, let's talk about some that actually worked, like my favorite anime of summer 2023, Undead Murder Farce, that managed to tell a supernatural murder mystery in the funnest way possible. Or Oku. Our honorable mention for the Nerify spot is without a doubt the best political drama of the year because it flips the politics and social norms straight on their head. Go watch Oku. But the number five spot has to go to the anime concept that dominated the world. 
So get this, this doctor has a patient who's a little girl who falls in love with an idol. The two get close, but not in a creepy way, and then the little girl dies, and the doctor continues being a fan of the idol out of respect for his dead patient. Okay. The idol shows up one day, pregnant, shocks the doctor because she is so young, but he agrees to help her deliver the babies and through the pregnancy, but, but not in a creepy way. That sounds a little creepy. It's not, but the doctor gets murdered by one of the idol's stalkers and gets reborn as her kid. But wait, she has twins, and his twin sister is the original little girl patient, and neither one of them knows it. Uh-huh. And now, the twins have to navigate being born in the entertainment industry while keeping the fact that they're their mother's child a secret in order to not ruin their mother's career. What do you think? Anime of the Year material. I know, right? By now, you've heard of Oshinoko, and if you haven't, trust me, I haven't spoiled anything for you. That's just the bio. The concept for this anime is great, but what really carries the concept past its amazing first episode is the characters. I talked about my thoughts on this show extensively in previous videos, so for this one, I'm gonna mix it up a little bit and tell you why it's placed top five of the year for me. Kanaharima. That's it. Kana is by far one of the best written characters in this show and in this year of anime. Maybe it's because I'm a struggling artist myself, but her mental struggle correlating her self-worth to how many people appreciate her work is something that even non-creatives can relate to. Come on. Go up. Kana may have held this show down, but characters like Ruby, Mem, Aqua, and of course the idol queen herself, I really brings the character writing home, showing us that the author knows exactly who these characters are, and I just love that feeling. I know season two is gonna blow me away even more. Concepts are important, but it's how these concepts are executed that makes the story. Yes, execution is just as important, and look no further than shows like Under Ninja. A standard ninja anime on paper, but its comedic writing and eccentric characters by the same mangaka of I Am A Hero makes this one standard comedy anime stand out in a way that is weird as fuck, but also fun as fuck. Seriously, if you want a good laugh, check this one out. This or Masterful Cat, a show about a cat who becomes a housewife, otherwise known as peak comedy. But whatever you do, don't watch Mitchell. I, I, I'm sorry, Mashal, the most unfunny piece of trash that come out of jump in a long time. I'm serious. Shangri-La Frontier came out to show us that a show can still be entertainingly good with just action as long as it doesn't take itself too seriously. And Magi Revo, the best show of winter 2023, and Isekai, but one of the good ones because of its expert execution of dialogue and well-developed romance something the genre is severely lacking. I wanted to give the number four spot to overtake a slice life sports anime about overcoming trauma, but none of these well-executed shows could beat. My favorite anime of spring 2023, Heavenly Delusion is the embodiment of cinema when it comes to anime. A post-apocalyptic world, a science mystery lab with strange children, and monsters around every corner. What more could you ask for? I've said this, and other content creators have said this, hell, even the author has said this. This anime doesn't really tell you much, at least not with words. You have to pay attention to the environment, characters' reactions, symbols, and clues to piece this story together. And don't get it twisted. This is brilliant. The story will give you everything you need to piece the puzzle together, and when you finally do put it all together, a tear will fall from your eye as earlier scenes become more impactful with future context. Hold on, I need some water. Normally, I would deduct points for this way of storytelling, but Heavenly Delusion makes up for it by keeping you invested in the characters themselves, so you want to stay and solve the mystery. This anime has mastered the art form of subtle storytelling like no other in a nice package that defies expectations. You know me, I'm a big Slice Life and Romance guy, and this year us Slice Life and Romance fans were eating good, better than we've ever been. Ah, there's my water bottle. We might be entering the golden age of romance and slice life anime, and it's only getting started with shows like Yamada Level 999, Madhouse's new romance that desperately needs a second season because not only was the show a true shoujo romance brought to life with the funny text bubbles on the screen, if you've read manga like Gakko and Alice, you know what I mean, it genuinely was a fun ride. Okay, if not Yamada, then it has to be. Skip and Loafer, an anime drama so damn good they called me out personally. But in all seriousness, Skip and Loafer is a heartwarming drama that will literally brighten your day, but it's not the number three spot. 
Insomniac After School. Oh, that's actually our honorable mention for the number three spot. Insomniac After School is such a campy show in all the best ways possible with a romance couple that should definitely win Best Anime Couple of the Year. But Buddy Daddies, come on Buddy Daddies. Another honorable mention that started out as a Spy X Family copycat but definitely paved its own way with a beautiful story about found family and plus it's an anime original which we here at OTR heavily support so you know this was hard to gut. Ice Guy. Absolutely love Fuyutsuki. The danger's in my heart. A cute romance. I can't wait for season two. Tomo Chan is a girl. Before the anime came out, I read this manga all the way through and the anime killed it. The girl I like forgot her glasses. Oh wait wait. But why is this one up here? I, I, I thought this was mid as hell. I don't know. You tell me. All right, fine. Which slice of life and romance is number three? Actually, none. The number three spot didn't go to a slice of life or romance this year. Instead, it went to an anime that came out of left field and absolutely blew me away. That thing. I won't spend too much time on this because it literally was my last video, so if you want to hear why Pluto is top 5 of the year in vivid detail, go watch that. However, my first introduction to Naoki Urasada was not a disappointment. Pluto wastes no time getting you invested. And let's be honest here, boy does it feel good to have that old 2000 anime feel back. This sense of nostalgia is hard to describe without saying you just had to be there, but you kind of just had to be there. 2000's anime had a charm to it that enticed its audience into a slow burn story, one where you had to be invested in the world, a charm that kind of stopped people from watching a show casually. If you've seen a bunch of early 2000's anime, then you know, and if you haven't, well, you just had to be there. And yes, this was due to fewer shows coming out, so more focus was put on each project, but I think Pluto's adaptation finds a healthy balance between today's hook them in the first episode approach to the early 2000s slow burn approach, making it a must watch for any anime fan. We're winding down the clock here because there are a lot of great anime that came out this year with some pretty good thematic messaging. Like the Scott Pilgrim anime and its message on love. This show is a fun and goofy watch with its theme that love is different for everyone. It doesn't matter if it's a crazy ex, a gay best friend, or an alternate version of yourself. Love and relationships just work out differently depending on the people and aren't on a set path. Also, I hear there is a debate about whether this show is anime or not. And I already got you guys covered in that topic as well, so go watch it. And for those who say it's not anime, whatever. Yeah. Or Moipon, a sports anime themed around not striving to be the best, but spending time in a club that you enjoy with people you enjoy. It's honestly refreshing to see a different take on sports anime friendships. Even shows that I necessarily didn't enjoy all that much like Undead Unluck and My Happy Marriage. Oh, wow, <laughs> I just made enemies of Shonen Jump heads and romance fans had themes about overcoming trauma that I couldn't ignore. I thought these two were okay, not bad, just okay. But the show, I think, handled its themes the best this year, earning that number two spot was... Mao Mao gets kidnapped and finds herself working as an apothecary in the Emperor's Palace, solving several cases with the power of science and medicine. Ever since I saw that first trailer, I just knew this anime was gonna be for me. Maybe it was the wonderful setting. The dynamics of an ancient Chinese castle, similar to Raven of the Inner Palace, is absolutely one of the most interesting settings in fiction. Or the slice life aspects, the way these characters interact with each other from Mao Mao not wanting to be involved and just wanting to make her drugs, to Jing Chi thinking he can seduce his way through life while still being a very cunning character, to each of the concubines having a distinct personality, all the way to Mao Mao's casual yet wise father. The characters in this show are an immediate hook. But if I'm being honest, it was all of those things and how the show handles its themes. Don't let looks deceive you. This show is not for the immature. Our MC was literally raised in a brothel and now serves underneath one of the Emperor's concubines. Look it up if you're confused. But the show's approach to these mature themes isn't shameful. It's barely even your typical anime fan service. It's normal. It's adult. It's mature. You know that change in your life where you stop overreacting to adult content, curse words become the norm, you don't blush or giggle about sexual content, instead you approach it in a more educational and informative way, and your mama jokes stop being funny because you can think of 10 better comebacks than aren't as personal. Bills are due, you don't have time for the bullshit, you change, you mature, you grow up. 
That feeling is how this show handles its themes personified. Sure, you still have your blushing anime characters, but the show never shies away from the nitty gritty, never going overboard, but still staying realistic to its world and setting. Basically, this show treats its audience as if they are mature, and I absolutely love that. Here it is, the number one on this list and my anime of the year. You probably already know that it's The Demi King is defeated by the hero's party, but what happens next? Free Rent is top of this list because it has A, a great concept, boy did fantasy anime need a savior and Free Rent was just that. No isekai bullshit here, just straight up magic, demons, warriors, elves, and priests. This anime doesn't need to explain that much because you already know how a world like this works. In fact, it plays off your knowledge of tropes and explores it all through our main girl Free Rent an elf who has way too much time on her hands, only to find out that time is a cool thing. But when explored, it can also be beautiful. B, amazing execution. I said this on Twitter and I'll say it again. On paper, this anime is your typical fantasy, but how it's presented makes it so much more. It's not trying to hook you with a cool power system or fan service. Instead, it's focused on character relationships, lore, and thematic writing, leading us to And C, a great theme and slice life elements. This show is a slice of life fantasy that does have action, but is mainly about following these characters' day-to-day -day lives, following the journey. Catching those small tidbits of character moments, seeing what you thought was a serious character show a goofy side, watching a relationship form in real time, or discovering the truth about someone who was never meant to be a hero, but accomplished great things anyway. Free Rent at its core is a lot of things. The passage of time, making new friends, learning from old ones, the weight of memories, the bond between student and master. I, I could go on. But what makes this show number one, besides the overall production that the animators absolutely outdid themselves with, is the fact that this anime is a love story. A love story about an elf who fell in love without realizing it and is experiencing all the emotions that love has brought to her life the intrigue, the beauty, the sadness, and most precious of them all, the smiles. So in the end, I guess I did get my slice of life and romance anime. Just not how I was expecting it. All right, guys, it's time to wrap up this year of anime. Overall, I thought it was a pretty banger year. Maybe not better than last year, but not too far off. Speaking of last year, if you like this type of video, then go check out last year's recap. You'll probably find some anime you missed. Thank you to our patrons, and make sure you guys follow us on socials. Thank you so much for watching, and Happy New Year. As always, my friends, I'm RJ Lane, and this has been On The Rise.